All right, everybody, welcome to another deep dive. Mm -hmm. Today, we're going to be talking about something pretty fundamental to life itself. We are. That's right. And that is energy. Yes. Energy, the stuff that powers every living thing on this planet. It does. And to really get a grasp of how energy works in the living world, we've got to talk about two processes that are like two sides of the same coin. Oh, but I'm intrigued. Photosynthesis well, and so cellular respiration. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I know that one too from like high school biology. Yeah, exactly. So we all learned about these processes back in school, right? Right. But today we're going to deep dive into them to truly appreciate how incredible and interconnected they really are. Sounds good. So let's start with photosynthesis because I think that's the one that most people kind of have a general understanding yeah, of. Yeah, definitely. It's plants using sunlight to make food, right? That's the basic idea, yeah. But think about it for a second. How wild is that, that plants can literally capture sunlight? It's pretty mind-blowing. And use it to create their own food. It's like they have these tiny little solar panels built right into their leaves. Well, they kind of do. They have these things called chloroplasts, and inside those chloroplasts is where the magic happens. Okay, so break it down for us. What are these chloroplasts all about? So chloroplasts contain a special pigment called chlorophyll, and that's what gives plants their green color. Ah, okay, so that's where the green comes from. Exactly, and chlorophyll is like this superstar molecule that can absorb light energy from the sun. So it's kind of like an antenna for sunlight. Yeah, you could think of it that way. And once the chlorophyll captures that light energy, it doesn't just sit there. What does it do? It uses that energy to power a series of chemical reactions that convert carbon dioxide and water into glucose. Okay, hold up. Glucose, that's sugar, right? It is. And it's the plant's primary source of energy. So basically, plants are making their own sugary snacks using sunlight, air, and water. Pretty much, yeah. That's amazing. And we as humans, we can't do that, right? Nope. We have to rely on eating plants or other animals that have eaten plants to get our energy. So everything we eat ultimately traces back to the sun's energy yeah. captured by plants. It all starts with photosynthesis. Wow. That's pretty incredible. And so that brings us to the other side of the coin, cellular respiration. Right. And this is where things get really interesting because, in a way, cellular respiration is kind of like the opposite of photosynthesis. In a way it is, yeah, because while photosynthesis is all about building up glucose, cellular respiration is about breaking it down. To release the energy, right? Exactly, because the energy stored in glucose, it's not in a form that our cells can directly use. Right, we can't just like plug ourselves into a tree and get powered up. Exactly. We need a way to convert that stored energy into something our cells can actually use, and that's where cellular respiration comes in. Okay, so how does it work? So basically during cellular respiration, Glucose reacts with oxygen. Oxygen, the stuff we breathe. The very same. And this reaction releases the energy that was stored in the glucose. So we're essentially using the energy that plants captured from the sun. We are, and we're releasing carbon dioxide and water as byproducts. Which plants then use for photosynthesis. Exactly. It's a beautiful cycle. So it's like this constant exchange of energy and matter between plants and animals. That's a great way to put it. And this cycle, it's not just happening in our backyards. It's happening on a global scale. So this is what keeps the whole planet going. In a way, it is. it helps regulate the levels of oxygen and carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, which is pretty crucial for maintaining a stable climate. Okay, so this tiny little process happening inside every cell is actually connected to big things like climate change. Absolutely it is. So we've got to protect this cycle. We really do, because when we burn fossil fuels, for example, we're releasing tons of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. And that's throwing off the balance. Yeah, it's like we're tipping the scales and that's contributing to climate change. Wow, it's amazing how these two processes, photosynthesis and cellular respiration, yeah. are so interconnected with everything else on the planet. It really is. It's a web of life and we're all part of it. So what can we do to help keep this cycle in balance? Well, we can start by being more mindful of our own energy consumption. Like driving less, using less electricity. Exactly. And we can also support efforts to transition to cleaner energy sources. Like solar and wind power. Yes, and don't forget about the power of plants. Plenty more trees. Absolutely, because trees are like the champions of photosynthesis. They're constantly absorbing carbon dioxide and releasing oxygen. So every little bit helps. It really does. And the more we understand about these incredible processes, the more we can appreciate the interconnectedness of all life on Earth. Absolutely. Well, that was a fascinating deep dive into the world of energy. It and it really makes you think about all the amazing things that are happening right under our noses all the time. It really does. So next time you take a breath or eat a delicious meal, 
remember that incredible journey of energy that connects us all. Good advice. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive. We'll see you next time. See you later. Bye. Bye.